Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of bullet journaling. Um, I am planning out my month of November today, so I'm kind of in the mood to try out a new art style, so I think I'm gonna be doing that today. So before we get into the planning portion, I'm gonna be setting up my monthly spread. So I have my watercolor brushes, and I just got this new little shot glass that I'm using as a water bowl from one of my favorite ceramics people right now. And I'm also getting out all my gouache paints. And then I'm also using my Canson XL watercolor paper. And now I'm pretty much ready to go. So I actually used Skillshare again this month as a little bit of inspiration. So I'm super duper excited that they're the sponsor for today's video. I really loved Sarah Boccaccini Meadows' uh, Skillshare class. I've been following her on Instagram for quite a while now and I just love how she adds patterns and texture to her botanical paintings. I think it's so awesome to kind of get a behind the scenes look using Skillshare with some artists that I actually know and love. Skillshare is a online learning community with thousands of classes that you can take in things like arts or business. And with the premium membership, you get unlimited access to all of those classes. So if you guys would like to try out Skillshare, I have a link for two months free to the unlimited membership. All right, so now I'm gonna get to painting and I'm gonna start with a base layer. I'm just mixing some like teal and black and blue. And for this painting today, I'm actually going to attempt to do a little bit of abstract painting with um, some detailing at the end. And I'm kind of nervous about it because I have no idea what I'm doing. I feel like I know kind of like what colors go together and um, how to add different textures after watching some Skillshare classes, but I don't know exactly what I'm doing. So what's nice about abstract art is that it doesn't have to be perfect, but for some reason that's actually a little bit harder in my mind. I actually watch a lot of abstract artists on YouTube. I can't remember the name of the guy that I watch, but I'll put it right here if I find him. Um, but he's just so amazing at it and I just don't understand like how his brain works. I just wish I knew his like thought process going into all of these paintings that he does, but um, they're just so fun to watch and so relaxing. It's like visual ASMR to me. So um, yeah, I just love it, but um, that's kind of what the inspiration is for this painting. And I actually did three other, or wait, no, two other paintings apart from this one um, at the same time because I had so much drawing time in between each layer and I also wanted to have like three different options to choose from if I didn't like one of them for whatever reason. But I was actually really happy with all three of them and how they turned out. So I'm gonna put them all in my shop and I'm actually going to create a whole separate video on um, the process of all three paintings. I already pretty much have it edited so I'm gonna have it up in the next few days for you guys. But yeah, I'm gonna kind of slow down the process video and I'm gonna make it more relaxing um, opposed to this one where I kind of sped up a lot of stuff. But yeah, now I'm just doing some detailing and as you can see, I did a bunch of like different patterns to add some texture to the painting. And now I'm gonna just go in with my Uniball Signo white gel pen and I'm gonna add some more detailing. So when I was adding the detailing, I was trying to think of the different things that the painting reminded me of. And one of them was like uh, rainy clouds. And so I wanted to draw some little tiny, cute um, rainbows in the top corner. And I also did some little raindrops on the bottom. But yeah, that is pretty much it for the detailing part. And now it's time to add the floral design. So I'm just taking a white pencil. This one is by Stableo, and I believe it's able to draw on like almost all surfaces like glass or plastic. So I've actually used it quite a bit um, for different projects. But yeah, I really wanted to use pencil for this part because I feel like I just love how all of the textures kind of come together in one painting. Mm -hmm. 
And this painting is finally done and I'll give you a little sneak peek of the other two but I will have that paint with me video coming this week at some point. Um, so now I'm going to just take my Fine Tech Gold paint palette and I'm going to add some gold detailing. I'm just going to use some methods like before and I'm just going to add some more little patterns with the gold paint. And that is the final touch I'm going to do to this painting before I get too carried away with it. I definitely think the hardest part about abstract painting is knowing when to stop. So I'm just going to stop there and I'm super happy with it. It's very different from anything that I've probably done before. I also love the gold detailing so I will add that as an option in my shop for all the prints but yeah now it's time to scan the paintings and add the monthly lettering and this is how the prints turned out. If you're curious about how I edited it and printed it out, I have it in a lot of my past monthly plan with me videos. I just decided not to put it in this time because I didn't want to get too repetitive, but just to use my Canon MX 922 printer and it works pretty well. And um, I'm just using my Tombow mono adhesive tape to paste these in. And this is how my spread turned out. Alright, so now I'm going to take my Avery Ultra Tabs and I'm going to add the tab for November in my journal and then I'm going to move on to my first kind of like planning spread. So I decided I really wanted to do a habit tracker for the month because I feel like I really want to be on top of it this month. I am graduating in just like two months from now so I just really want to make sure I get everything done and I'm on top of everything I need to do so um, yeah that's why I'm kind of wanting to do this habit tracker and I'm just going to take out my little typewriter stamps with my ink pad and I'm going to write habit tracker on the top and you guys know I always use these I love these things so much I've gotten so much use out of them but yeah I'm just going to finish up my habit tracker and then move on to my next planning page. Okay, so this month I was actually not lazy and I actually printed out pictures that I wanted to paste into my journal. And these are all from artists on Pinterest that I found and I just repinned them so that you guys can find the original photographer. And um, yeah, I just have it all in a folder called Picks to Add to Bullet Journal if you guys wanna look at it there. And this page is just going to be for my monthly goals and also I'm going to have a little section on the bottom for um, YouTube videos that I want to film. So it's just going to be a little planning page. I actually have like three pre-filmed videos that I've been wanting to post for a while, but I'm just super bad at getting myself to actually edit them. Um, but yeah, some ones that I definitely want to film for December are my bullet journal flip through for this bullet journal and also I'm going to add my last year's bullet journal because I never did the flip through. I filmed it and I didn't like how it turned out so I just never posted it and so I'm just going to do a combined flip through of both bullet journals or maybe I'll do two separate videos I haven't decided yet but anyways this is how my two planning pages turned out and now I'm going to start setting up for my first weekly layout for November. So. I'm going to take some of those uh, photos that I printed out from before and I tried to make sure that they all kind of matched with the color scheme that I wanted to go for. I feel like the theme on the left side totally doesn't match the right side but that's okay. I'm just gonna do some fun little doodles and kind of make it a uh, kind of fall themed uh, spread. I feel like this spread is already reminding me of my past spreads that I used to do, just like how they were all scrapbooky and everything. I feel like lately I've made it kind of more simplistic because I've just been super busy and I want it to be like a clean, 
um, like simple spread to use, but I just miss doing all these like little doodles and um, using stickers and uh, photographs. I've just missed doing all of that so much and kind of making it more like a scrapbook feel. I think I actually, so in each month I have a bunch of different trips that I went on or pictures that I wanted to add that I haven't honestly added. I just haven't used my uh, bullet journal like a scrapbook this year as much. But I made sure to leave a couple pages blank in each month so I could go back and add it later. So maybe I'll do like a whole video on adding those little scrapbooky spreads to my journal. Let me know what you guys think about that. I think it would be kind of fun to just do all of them at once. It'll probably take me like a whole day because I have so many photos that I haven't added. But I think it'll be super fun to kind of do that in a video. And this is how my final spread turned out. I actually really, really love this spread. I can't wait to fill it with writing for the week. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had so much fun filming it. I honestly needed this little break away from everything else. And I want to say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check them out uh, with the link in my description. And if you guys haven't already, make sure to subscribe to see more videos from me. I'm going to be doing a lot of videos in the coming months. And feel free to check out my Etsy shop and Instagram if you want to see more from me.